In this series of videos, we will talk about the fictional history of A Song of Ice and Fire, or Game of Thrones if you prefer. This series will cover a civil war called the Dance of the Dragons, a seminal moment in Ice and Fire history. First, an introduction to this universe though. It starts 12,000 years ago, when the first humans came to the continent of Westeros and battled giants and children of the forest. After a long war, the children and giants were nearly wiped out. 4,000 years later, we see the Long Night, a destructive war between White Walkers and humans, which ended in the construction of the wall. Over the next six millennia, kingdoms would rise and fall until eventually the entire continent of Westeros is united in the Seven Kingdoms. This kingdom is eventually ruled by Robert Baratheon, and that's where the show and books start. Now you're wondering, wasn't this supposed to be about the Dance of the Dragons? Where did they occur? Well, they happen right here, in the year 129, and is truly one of the most defining moments in Westerosi history. For you see, the Civil War would eventually bring the downfall of the Targaryens. Without this war, the Targaryens might have crushed Robert's rebellion. Without this war, the White Walker army could have been destroyed in mere minutes. The year is 101 AC, a time when Targaryens ruled from atop their dragons. And it's this year that King Viserys Targaryen assumes the Iron Throne of Westeros and plunges his kingdom into a civil war from which it will never recover. But in life, his seven kingdoms prospered. The throne was secure, his treasury was full, and the seven kingdoms were at peace. To those he liked, he bestowed gold, positions and honors, which made him loved by small folks and lords alike. Trouble started when the queen bore the king a daughter, Princess Rhaenyra. The queen and king had tried getting a son, a crown prince, but so far all their sons had died in childbirth. Rhaenyra was a proud woman, and stubborn woman. Though she could be charming, she was quick to anger and never forgot a slight. When her mother died, she was the only living child of the king, and so the king proclaimed little Rhaenyra as his heir and gave her a castle to boot. The king also made all the lords of the Seven Kingdoms swear fealty to her, promising to defend her rights of succession. But the king was still young and married again, this time with a girl named Alicent Hightower. At first, Alison and Rhaenyra got along well, but that soon changed when the queen bore a son, Prince Aegon. Rhaenyra now had competition for the throne that was rightfully hers, or so she thought. And it's this rivalry that split the family and the kingdom in two, creating the party of the queen and the party of the princess. They were called the Greens and the Blacks, named after the gowns the queen and princess wore during a tourney. The Greens, the party of the Queen, supported the rights of Prince Aegon to become king and came to include many of the great houses throughout Westeros. On the other side we have the Blacks, the party of the Princess who supported her right to the Iron Throne. When Rhaenyra came of age, she was expected to marry. The Queen thought it a good match to marry her son Aegon with Rhaenyra. This way there would be no rivalry, Rhaenyra would become Queen and her brother would become King. Uh, keep in mind that it was common at the time for the royal family to marry siblings to each other. But the king refused, he loved his daughter and wouldn't marry her off to a boy 10 years younger whom she hated. Instead her father married her off to Leno Valerian, a homosexual. When Rhaenyra refused, he threatened to name Aegon as his heir instead of her. So she conceded and together they had three sons. We'll talk more about her sons in future episodes. Over the years the kings tried to bring his family together, but the greens and the blacks only began hating each other more because of that going so far that at a funeral, one of Rhaenyra's sons cut out the eye of one of the queen's sons. Rhaenyra later married a man known far and wide, Daemon Targaryen, whom they called the Rogue Prince. He was the most feared man in the world and we'll get more into this badass next episode. And then the deciding moment came, the king died. The small council members gathered, and the conversation soon turned towards putting Rhaenyra on the Iron Throne. But she wasn't in the city at the time, and the hand of the king, the father of the queen, told her that Prince Aegon, his grandson, would become king instead. The master of coin objected, insisting that they had sworn an oath to Rhaenyra, but the hand countered by saying that they were under no obligation to follow that oath. That oath was 24 years old and most of the people gathered at that council were too young to have sworn any oaths at the time. On top of that, Rhaenyra was married to Prince Daemon, and it would become he who would rule instead of Rhaenyra because, well, he is a man and that's how monarchies work. And the biggest reason to make Aegon king? If Rhaenyra became queen, she would kill her stepmother and all her half-brothers to make sure there was nobody to oppose her rule. 
Then the master of coin decided he wouldn't listen to such treason and began to leave, but was immediately killed upon leaving his chair. And thus, he became the first casualty of the Dance of the Dragons. With his death, the small council knew which side they were on. They vowed their loyalty to King Aegon, arresting anyone suspected of being loyal to Rhaenyra and sending messages to all those who might support Aegon's cause. Next time, find out how Rhaenyra reacted to her father's death, and watch as the civil war is starting to consume the country. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more like this, go click the subscribe button, it's right here.